I think it started with a prayer of give the stories to the people that you've called to write. Those that have got a passion for it and a natural gifting for it. Give them the stories that you want told on this earth. So powerful that a film can actually give someone an experience that they actually don't know in their life. Welcome to a brand new season of Art Vance. I'm beyond excited about uh, the conversations that I'm going to be able to share with you uh, throughout this season. We have an amazing lineup of people that we have amazing discussions about how God's heart for artists burns, but also the mission to the arts. And so I'm looking forward to that. But today on the show, we have Carolyn Dante, who is uh, a screen actor who's had more than 30 years experience. She works in casting. If you look her up on Google, you'll see her IMDb has a, a great array of things that she's been a part of that we would be familiar with. Um, but we also delve into the heart of worship and how our life of worship impacts our dreams for the for creativity, our dreams for if you want to be an actor, uh, writers. And she shares her heart as someone as I'll I'll coin the phrase that she uses in her Instagram bio, just a girl actor longing to tell heaven's stories. So tune in and enjoy this episode of Art Vance and welcome back to season two. Okay, welcome back to a brand new episode of Art Vance. We're going after God's heart for the arts industry. You're going to be really intrigued and inspired and blessed by the guest on today's show, especially if you feel called to acting or you feel called to casting, even writing. Uh, there's going to be such a, a, a impartation in this conversation with Carolyn Dante. So, Carolyn, I want to welcome you to Artvance. It's so good to have you on here. Hello. Great to be on here. <laughs> Thank I, you. I love talking to all creatives, but I do have a really warm spot for actors. Um, and I just love that they are the face of today's storytelling. And I love that you've been so immersed in this industry for such a long time. Um, I'm excited about this conversation and I'm excited where the Holy Spirit's going to take it because this whole subject of creativity and arts can become so ambiguous with, with without the light of Jesus um, directing us and giving inspiration. And um, so, I'm yeah, I'm excited for what he's going to speak through you and bring out of this conversation. Yes, so, same. I've spent a fair bit of time praying about that. <laughs> oh, uh, you speak. <laughs> so good. Carolyn, what can you tell us about you? Can you let us into your world a little bit? Yeah. Um, I am a professional actor. I've been in the industry for 30 years, which makes me feel really old. But I did start when I was a very young teenager, so that makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> um, I... Um, also have experience in casting. Um, many years ago, I used to cast in Sydney uh, with a beautiful casting director called Anusha Zarkesh for Home and Away and other projects, um, and mo movies and film. And uh, for the last eight years up in Brisbane, I cast with Ben Parkinson Casting when I'm not acting, when I'm not auditioning, um, and I really enjoy the casting work too. It, it gives an in a really special insight into, I think, um, my personal perspective on the industry um, and it can be really encouraging for actors and I also teach when I have the time and I enjoy that as well. That's amazing and you said you've got a little uh, puppy at home? <laughs> yes I have a little dog at home she's very noisy <laughs> she's very barky and so uh, actually works out it easy to do this in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally I hear you. Now um when when did you start getting passionate about acting? Uh, you mentioned you've been in it for 30 plus years and you started as an early teenager. What sparked that passion for you? You know, it's funny. I think when I look back to the very first um, time, I would say it was my memory is playing cowboys and Indians with my brothers. I've got three brothers and a sister and it was cowboys and Indians in the backyard um, and it was that, full immersion i'm not a cowboy i'm not an indian <laughs> full immersion into imagination this other world where anything was possible and you could do anything and um just pure play and i really still think that's always the basis of acting it's just pure play it's that childlike nature that um which is so key in our you know walk with god as well uh staying childlike um and so that would be my first and then i think Watching TV, watching movies, um, 
I just knew that I wanted to do that. It was just, I want to do that. I'm going to go after it. I used to, every Saturday morning, this is shows how old I am, I'd look, flick through the newspaper and look for anything that said auditions. Um, and, Mom, can I go to this? Dad, can I go to this? And obviously being one of five kids, they couldn't take me to everything. But probably by the time I was 14, 15, um, I randomly found another audition. It was in the city. Um, I, I don't think I really knew what it was. I just it was an audition that, you know, it was for teenagers. I'm going. <laughs> so I went in and I'd never done any acting classes or anything. And I um, blessed my mom and dad. They, they took me in and they waited around all day. It was one of those huge cattle calls, over 3,000 kids, to all kids in New South Wales. And it was just sort of a... Uh, callback after callback kind of thing so it was all day but for me I was like just playing I'd, I'd never done any of these acting games before improvisations and all this was, I'd never done anything and I just loved it and I kept getting through and through and then needed to come back the next day as well and um, I think I did it because I just like loved doing it I didn't even know what I was doing it for other than I loved it and then I I got in they selected I think probably 15 kids and it was a talent development program for drama students um and I, I think I, I remember obviously being excited that I got in even though I didn't know what I was getting into um and it ended up being the most wonderful thing for three years I um was part of a group of 15 kids. We were trained by NIDA tutors, so in acting, speech, movement, absolutely everything. Um, we'd also travel around um, to country towns, state schools, doing performances, attending drama camps, teaching others. So I had the most wonderful start in terms of just doing something because I purely loved it. It wasn't for anything after that which is what so often happens in the industry. You know, people have stars in their eyes and they, oh, my gosh, I've got this audition and I'm going to nail it and I'm going to be a big American star. And um, maybe, You know, obviously everyone's goals are different, but um, I just loved it because it was just pure and pure play. And from there, yeah, everything started. That's so cool. I love that you mentioned childlikeness and play. Um I would imagine, and I might be assuming, so please correct me, but when the work days get hard, so long shoot days, you're not on set for another four hours or something like that. I don't know if that happens for you with the kind of work you do. Is childlike play kind of your anchor that you jump back to just to remember, even this is hard work, I got to remember that I've got to stay in that childlike place. Would you say that's kind of like one of your anchors that you jump back to? Yeah, it definitely is an anchor. It's um, wh how I find it anchors me is when when I'm busy and I've got multiple shoots in a week, multiple auditions and a wardrobe call, and my kids act as well. So then there's three of us, so it's sort of you know triple the amount of work. Um, and it's like you know I'll get an audition in. Oh my gosh, it's due in like not, not tomorrow, but the next day. But tomorrow I'm on set all day, and it's four thirty in the afternoon. Okay, my kids get home at six. I've got 15 minutes to put it down. We're not cooking dinner tonight. Like the world, everything, <laughs> there's no routine goes out the door and it's really tricky and it's like I just got to get this done. And there is that sense of I've just got to work and get this done. But at the same time, I'll then anchor and go, okay, remember, you do it for this. You do it because you want to play. Um, and sometimes it's tough to find the play when you, you're limited by time. Um but that's also a film set, you know, a TV set. You're always limited by time. Um, but it's, I guess that <laughs> the joy of it is, becomes your strength at that point. Um, mm. Yeah. That's amazing. And, I mean, on, on set I, you know, it, and it's actually it's interesting on set, um, sometimes there's a level of play that's allowed and sometimes it's not. You know, you, you cannot change the dialogue. You cannot change your movement. You cannot change what you're doing. You know, you, um, so it's an in, it's a slight internal play. <laughs> yeah. On the character a, without a being mindset. a huge, big, fun play and just being free. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love that you said that, Carolyn, because often with people not understanding what that play component means, they can think it's a free-for-all, but there's so much pressure in that space. And so it is an interior discipline to play. Um, and, yes. And, and it's... Yeah, and it, and it's and a play in finding a character. It's an imagination, um, and and 
perhaps sometimes more in the development, like on set, for example, between, between takes, I don't muck around unless the other big actor <laughs> who um, or the director is like, all right, we're going to play now. Um, there's usually more important things that, you know, it's not like, hey, so we're just going to play. It's like, no, we have got, <laughs> there's a hundred people standing around, you know, everyone has a life and needs to get back to it and time is money. Um, so, yeah, I'm usually about, particularly in between takes, honouring the other actor, particularly if they're quite a big star, they're, they're, they're carrying the show, they're the lead role it's more important that they are in this headspace that they need to be in preparation for character and this scene. Mm. Um, so I will, I'm a big watcher on set. I just watch. And um, whereas, I, you know, some people do come in and oh, they just want to get to know the star and they just, and it's like, no, 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 that's, we are working here. Um, but then some, set, some sets, you know, there's, you know, when the time is to play, you can play. Yeah, you need that social intelligence. Um, and you mentioned honouring the people around you. Was that something that you kind of walked into the industry with? Like, I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to intentionally honour people and make room for people. Or did that kind of come over time after working in the industry, seeing people model it or even seeing people not model it and learning to, to desire that kind of environment to work in? How did that come about, that kind of culture in your thinking? I think I, um, I think I naturally always had it, and I like I remember starting as a teen and even doing say some extra work. I just came in and I watched because I'm like I'm learning. I'm going to come and I'm going to learn, and I did see different behaviours modelled. Right, I'll never do that when I'm when I'm a speaking role. I'll never do that, um, and I'll never do that, or and I and I will do that. So, um, and then I think as I uh, got older it maybe I was just aware that that's what that's what I valued because like I still get upset when an idiot gets a role <laughs> I'm like come on there are good people out there are, you know like I mean everyone's everyone wants you know nice people you know and people with good values to, to to be blessed and have favor and um <laughs> so yeah but I think that that's it's interesting, like, so I remember when I started getting um, some speaking roles, I, I made a point that if there were ever any extras on set, at some point when it's appropriate, not in between takes necessarily, I'll go up and say hi and sit with them and have a chat and let them know that they're valued. Because often as an extra, you don't feel valued, you're just a piece of cattle. You, you st stand there for six hours, we'll tell you when we want you to do something. <laughs> no chair, no water, no nothing, you know. Mm. Um, obviously, some sets, it's different. Um, and But also at the same time, knowing when I need to actually, I need to focus and I need to prepare so that I can do the job that I'm here for. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's so good. You can't always be on. You've got to have your focus and know what your assignment is. Um, now, with um, with your relationship with God, this is this is the exciting bit. Uh, that was exciting before. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, true. I, let's get to the relationship with God. <laughs> because I'm actually I'm actually the same. I remember when I I got in my first commercial as a 15 year old. It was a competition I won, and they flew me to New Zealand for this McDonald's commercial. And I remember. 10 hours I was in the tent, the catering tent before I went on set. And <laughs> yes. I, I still loved every single minute of it because I was getting to see yeah. these guys in their Arabic costumes, like the extras. And I was able to peek in and look, you know, in the, in the, um, in the video village and see what was being, yeah. you know, how they were doing it and, and things like that. So that wasn't boring at all. So I loved observing. Um, and so I totally get that, that, that side of the, the situation with you as well. Um, but if you could say how God impacted this passion or impacted your work, how would you, how would you say, how does God fit into an actor's life? Yeah, I think originally I kind of, um, did it cause I loved it. You know, you're a kid, you just do what you love. Um, and then it wasn't until I got older that I was like, I want my life to be purposeful. And when I was like, Hey God, like and having conversations and being like, what do you think, God? And, um, 
not wanting to um, waste my life, but also not wanting to steal it for myself. Um, I mean, there's always this temptation as humans is, you know, going after what we want. And um, I was conscious to go, I don't want to um, make this about me. My, 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 my goal is not to be famous. My goal is not to dot, dot, dot. My goal, I was like, what are, you, what are your plans for this, God? You've given me this passion, so I'm listening to the fact that you're giving me this passion. What is the dream that you've actually placed in my heart for this? And I really had um, this vision as such that, you know, heaven coming to earth looks so different for every single person. And, you know, God's bringing heaven to earth in the way that he brings it. And we're bringing it through us as well. And it's just so beautiful and multifaceted. And I was like, just, and I, I think it started with a prayer of give the stories, give the stories to the people that you've called to write. Those have got a passion for it and a natural gifting for it. Give them the stories that you want told on this earth. When you see an amazing film, um, it's so inspiring and when I feel like I'm sorry all over the place, there's so much I want to say. <laughs> um, movies have an ability to show someone something they don't know. Walk in someone else's shoe. For example, a, a, shoes. Someone who has never known the love of a father may not get the concept of God and fatherly love. But through a movie, they can go, oh, my gosh, I just felt like, is that what father's love is like? Is that what it feel like to be a son who's loved? And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's so powerful. So powerful that a film can actually give someone an experience that they actually don't know in their life. We can become so, have our blinders on, we can become black and white about an opinion of a person or a type of person or a thing or a situation and we can watch a movie and go, oh, wow, I um, really just judge that whole person, type of person, situation. You can be taught. You can learn. And I was like, God, this is beautiful. So I was like, I mean, like there are... <laughs> I mean, I would love to see in film heaven. <laughs> I want to see with my eyes here on earth. I want to see heaven. I'm like, God, the way that Akiani, the artist, um, if you haven't heard of Akiani, anyone, go and Google her, A-K-I-A-N-E, uh, young child visions of Jesus and God and paintings and an ability to paint. And I felt like that um, a writer can be given that vision and a writer can write it the same way that she can paint Jesus' face and I can look at it and go, oh, I see your face. And so um, and, and increase their ability and bring those connections in God between writers and directors, directors that are going, I really want to direct something for you, God, and, and a yeah. story that brings your heart. And a producer that has their producing skills that goes, I want to do something of quality, an actor that goes, oh, I want to tell you a story. Um, and and bring that all in together. And it's funny, there's a whole push at the moment, oh, if you want to be an actor, you have to be a writer and go and start writing stuff. I'm like, well, hang on, do we tell all directors they need to be actors? Do we tell all writers they need to be actors? And, you know, like I I have the gifting of an act, of being an acting, of, be, of being an actor and I work hard at, as, at, as, at it as well. Um, and I feel like, that that's almost enough um and i just pray that god um teaches me teaches me while i'm asleep he's the best teacher ever um and i want to be part of stories that have been released from heaven and i, I want to work with directors that are on that same page and producers and makeup artists and lighting guys and the whole kit and caboodle um and so i felt like god gave me that vision and I started by just praying that in and then I was like oh I want this I want to be part of this and then 
it's interesting though because um, this might be something that I hope is encouraging to others, even if they're directors or writers in a different realm of the arts. There are times when I go, oh, God, I don't really see that. I don't see your purpose in using me in this vision. And maybe you, you gave me this vision to pray it in, and that's cool. I'll, I'll be faithful and do that if that's all it is. I'll be just faithful in that. But, of course, my heart is to, be, is to want to be part of that. But I'm still, the, the work that comes to me, I don't get to choose uh, the, the roles that I want. It's like, hey, this role's come to me. So, and often I'll audition for a role and I'll even go and shoot shoot a role and I still don't know what the entire story is, which is hard because I go, well, what, what else is this story happening in this story? Is this a God story? I want to be caught conscious of what I'm choosing, but I don't always have that information and I find that hard and I sometimes that has me doubting and going, well, you know what, God, maybe, maybe there's something else I could be doing that's more purposeful for you. Um, and then other, t- other times I think, okay, well, maybe that's still to come and I'll have faith and I'll trust that maybe that's still to come. But I think probably my biggest anchor is I'm not called to be successful. I'm called to be faithful. And so when it always comes back to that, I go, okay, I'll stay faithful and do the roles as they come, trusting that. I always say if there's a role you don't want me to do, just you, blo- you close the door because this is there's so much out of my control here, so much. So anyway, that was really long-winded. No, that <laughs> was it wasn't at all too all over the place. But you mentioned, you know, my calling isn't to be successful, it's to be faithful. Mm. That That's yeah. like the equaliser of everyone's calling. Um, yes. And, and I love that you treat your career as a holy calling. Um, and I think that gives a lot of artists hope that what they're, what they're wanting to do, what they're dreaming of doing, and they feel like it's come from the Lord, it's not second rate. It's not, it's not the B option to being a missionary in the third world. We're, we're missionaries in every area God's put us, you know, and, and we represent him in everything we do. Uh, you know, it makes me think of that scripture where Jesus says, so say, let your light shine before men. Um, so they may see your good deeds and eventually they'll glorify the father (laughs) because of the good deeds you're doing. And those deeds are like your excellence of, of, um, talent, your excellence of character, integrity, your, your regard, your high regard for people, um, you know, which is all coming across through what you were just sharing then Carolyn. So I just, I love everything you just said there. And I know it's going to speak to so many people and their process right now, um, yeah, just on that too, it's interesting because I often think sometimes I go, oh, I don't think it's even about my uh, being an actor right now and in this role. You brought me onto this set to speak to that person. <laughs> you brought me into this place, not about the acting side. And, and again, coming back to like in everything you do, do it as though you're doing it for the Lord and honour God. And, it, and if I was really honest, I would feel like I feel a greater purpose when um yeah not so much about the acting role it's not what I do but it's how I do it it's how I am with people on set and how I treat them and value them and and in the casting room and in teaching and the other things that I do and that is yeah of greater importance yeah it's so good and there's been some and there has been some incredible moments flying to set um I've been on a plane with a girl and we're crying and we're praying and she just had the most incredible breakthrough. It was just beautiful. Like, and, um, and even, and, and it doesn't always have have to be incredible big moments that as a Christian, sometimes we value them more than others. Um, Sometimes it's just people going, she's authentic. I've met her 10 times for a period of a minute, you know, like, do you know what I mean? But I've always felt valued by that person. It, it's um, if we can make people feel loved by other people, then they can understand God's love more. <laughs> Absolutely, that's what keeps so, them little, thinking about little you. things, big things. Yeah, yeah, it stays with them. Like you sow that seed of love and high regard that's unearthly <laughs> and un, unchanged by human pressure or or circumstantial pressure. 
um, it's amazing. Um, yeah. you know, I think there's so much prophetic wisdom that came through you in that, in that time you were just speaking then. Can I ask you a couple of technical questions now? Yeah. Um, cause I want, I want to not just impart what you've said in terms of prophetically and cause all of that is so good. And can we talk about some practical components now? Yes. How does God help you prepare for a character? How do you, what's your, what's your kind of approach to preparing for a character? I, um, I mean, there's obviously quite a few things I do, but one thing that I'll often do is I'll sit with him, with it, with the story, with the character. Yeah. You know, what do you think? <laughs> and I go, what, what about this? What about that? And I just spend some quiet time and I listen. And I often will close my eyes and envisage the scene. And because so much about character is um, where are they coming from? What do they think? What do they want? Um, what's their life experience? What's their perspective? Um, how are they wanting to make this person feel? Um, and that is like, really comes down to, I guess, knowing about relationships. And he's the creator of all people. <laughs> so he knows. He, he is the ultimate creator. Um, and so I sit. Sometimes I'll sit on my floor and go, hey, I'm just um, coming to give you some quiet time because life is busy. <laughs> just is there anything you want to say about this? What, what wisdom have you got to offer me? Um, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that I think other than practical things of, that you'll learn in an acting class. Yeah, I love that. So sitting with it, just letting, you know, I think I've heard you say this about three times now. What do you think, God? And I can just like yeah. picture a T-shirt <laughs> <laughs> or a cup that's <laughs> like actor on set what do you think god you know the best question to ask how do i approach this story how do i approach this character how do i do this with excellence and yeah that's so cool i love it yeah. um and, and i'll also say um like i'll always read a script before bed if i've well sometimes i don't because i just need to stop and get out of that realm <laughs> of acting um but i'll go i'm right, going to bed now god you know um give me any dreams you want i'm listening yeah. Or give me, oh, there's something just amazing about our sleep life that is not just earthly sleep. It's almost an opportunity where, I, you know, we go, so my spirit's totally free with you tonight. Do what you want. Take my spirit where you need. Minister to whoever you need. Minister to me. Connect. Let's walk in the garden together. Um, let's total commune um, on another realm, in another spirit. And I might wake up in the morning and not remember anything that you said, but you've you've put something in me, and I just thank you, and I'm open, opening myself for you to do that. Here's the thing: you wake up from a dream and you are like sweating or you're crying. It's as if it's actually happened. And here's the thing: that as an actor, you know, you talk well. You're not going to experience. You know, you only have your own experience. You don't have others' experience, and. Yeah, that's true. We, we live from our perspective and our worldly experience. But I believe that in dreams we actually do have other experiences because we all know what it feels like to have those crazy dreams um, and our body has responded. So why don't we think that our mind and our spirit and our soul and everything else has responded and actually absorbed that information? So, um, yeah, <laughs> that's probably one of my little secrets, <laughs> acting tools. God, teach me my dreams. And it doesn't get hindered by time management as much <laughs> when <Yes>. you're asleep. <laughs> yeah. I do this because I enjoy it and for God's purpose within it, uh, not for any accolades of it. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. Is there a favorite role that you've played that you kind of look back and go, oh, that was my favorite character to play? There's probably quite a few. I, I do enjoy ones uh, that are quite different to myself, um, where you get to be in, a shoot, in someone else's shoes and, and live a life that you don't normally live. That's fun um, because there's a, a real sense of playing that. And there's always an understanding, like, this is not me. Um, 
but it is also nice to also sit in something that is meaningful and feels like you as well. Um, it's almost like a cathartic experience in that. I actually, um, I really love doing Australian Outback Spectacular shows Heartland. For those that don't know what that is, it's on the Gold Coast and it's a huge um spectacular show in a huge arena it seats over a thousand people and there's um it's a beautiful story of australian families um, farming families in the outback and drought and um it has a real beautiful story of community and courage and um there's amazing beautiful horses in it with amazing horse tricks and incredibly talented cast singing and um, silks and uh dancing it's a, it's a fantastic show but I really um I played two different lead characters in that obviously only one per night um but both those characters are great because they're just they were pretty much real stories we'd often get to meet people afterwards and 60 year old men that would come up crying and saying oh my gosh that's my life story I had to right. shoot my horse I had to you know like there was a, I really enjoyed that because it was telling people's stories and so many people were emotionally affected by that and got, you know, like whether they're like, oh, I didn't realise people went through that or I went through that and there's a sense of community because you're now telling my story and um, giving me hope, support. That's amazing. And that was fun too because I got to sing and I got to dance and ride a horse and drive a quad and work with the dogs and fly a helicopter, all this crazy stuff. So that was fun. And do it again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until until after two years, I was like, "That's enough." <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. Two years of doing the same show, yeah. Carolyn, you've given us so many gems to work with. You've given us a really amazing snapshot of your life in God, how that affects your values, how that affects your beliefs, um, and how that affects your your work in the film and television industry as an actor. Um, would you pray a blessing and even speak a word of wisdom or encouragement to people who are feeling called to acting, but uh, either intimidated, falsely humble, or just uncertain as to whether God would call them into that kind of space? Would you just pray a blessing and and speak whatever's yeah. on your heart there? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, um, Father God, I thank you so much for how wonderful you are and that you desire to bring heaven to earth. And I just, I thank you that you are doing that right now. You are bringing heaven to earth. Um, some of the ways that you're doing that is bringing the stories. I just ask that you would open the ears of those that would hear it and that you would increase their skills to be able to take that and run with it. For those that are unsure of what you have for them that you would speak loudly to them that they would hear you that they would rise against uh, fear and doubt that they would rise to what you're saying and that they would they would just see the opportunities that you're bringing to them and that you would bring divine opportunities divine moments where someone says hey <laughs> come to this um, they would see those moments those green lights um, and move forward with them and that they would pursue you just keep pursuing you that they would take time to sit and listen and that a faithful heart that trusts yeah I just release a trusting heart trusting heart and that's when we need it when we're unsure yeah spring heaven or earth lord through us amen you've been listening to carolyn dante who's an amazing actress who's had more than 30 years experience in screen and theater production in australia based in brisbane and one of the major amazing things that she's just talked about is how intimacy with god undergirds everything we do like she said, I'm not in it for the fame. I'm not in it for gaining those accolades and everything like that. And that heart of humility, that heart of passion for the Lord, it, it, she's reached a place where, you know, she's had some success, but that doesn't meet the deepest need that every human being lives with. 
and that is to know the Lord, to have intimate relationship with God, the ultimate artist, the master storyteller, the greatest creative. <laughs> um, and so I want to encourage you with that. Go back and listen through that again. And, uh, you know, as we go after God's heart's heart for the arts industry, it's an amazing opportunity to continually upgrade uh, the revelation we have of our own relationship with the Lord and uh, hear from Him and what is His heart for us. So stay tuned for the next episodes coming again soon, guys. And to our uh, Patreon members, please go to the member site for bonus content from this episode. I look forward to seeing you next time on Advance.